Do you want your YouTube videos to bring in thousands of new viewers to your channel every single day? Then this video is for you. Hi, I'm Heather, your YouTube coach, helping you share your story and build your brand on YouTube. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to properly tag your YouTube videos so that they're optimized for discovery on YouTube. This video might be a bit longer, but consider this a guide for everything you need to know on how to effectively use YouTube tags. I'm gonna break all of this down into eight points, so here we go. All right, let's start off with the high level stuff. First, maximize effectiveness with specificity. We're at the end of 2019 here, but does that mean it's too late to start and build a YouTube channel? No, and in a lot of cases, it's never been easier, but you do have to understand that the YouTube algorithm is constantly changing, it's constantly learning, and it's getting smarter every single day. So the way that tags used to work on YouTube is that you would create a video and you would tell YouTube that your video was about how to cook by using how to cook as one of your tags. That would serve as a signal to YouTube so that if anyone were to search how to cook, your video would show up in the search results. At their essence, tags still work like this, but because YouTube is at a point where it hosts what feels like an infinite amount of content, it has to rely on other factors aside from just video tags to determine what content is most relevant to which viewer. That includes a viewer's watch history, their search history, and other channels that they're subscribed to. So for these factors, obviously, you don't have any control over. That's why the more specific you can be with your content and your video tags, the easier it's gonna be for the YouTube algorithm to do its job in determining what your content is really about and who would be most interested in watching it. Now, what do I mean by more specific? If your video is about your day where you're documenting yourself having coffee and then you're going to a meeting and then you're getting some work done, then it's not really about any one particular topic aside from you, but if you're still building an audience, then no one knows who you are yet. Now, going back to the how to cook example, is your video about how to cook breakfast, lunch, dinner? Is it about how to cook a certain type of cuisine? Is it about how to cook healthy recipes or family recipes, cheap and easy recipes for college students? You see how the audiences will differ depending on the content and the keywords that you use? So if you create your content about a particular topic or for a certain group of people, that's when your tags are really gonna be the most effective. You're only gonna break through the noise by being more specific. Going off of this, number two, a crucial part of effectively tagging your videos is to do your research ahead of time. I do a lot of research and planning before I even pick up my camera to record a video. Even if I have a topic in mind, I still do research to figure out either an angle to take on that topic that maybe isn't being served, or maybe there's a topic that hasn't been updated in a while, so I'll take that approach, things like that. If you're intentional about what you're creating from the get-go, then it'll help you frame your content so that it's hyper relevant to the keywords that you're gonna use as tags and to the community that you're trying to serve. Now, this research can take a lot of time, but if you're ever tempted to just fill in the tag section with random keywords that might be related just because you're super eager to hit upload, I've been there, I get it, then you're not letting YouTube do what it's meant to do and you're not giving your video the best possible chance of getting discovered. So basically, you're just wasting the time and effort you put into creating your video in the first place. Be patient, do the research, and then just trust the process. YouTube does want to connect your content to the people who wanna watch it, but you have to help it do that. All right, so how exactly do we do this research? Number three, use tools to get more data. I've tried a variety of tools and websites and browser extensions, but these are the three that I found to be the most helpful when I'm looking for the best tags to use for my videos and for my clients' videos. First, there's a YouTube search bar, which is obviously built right into YouTube. I like to start with the YouTube search bar whenever I have an idea for a future video because the auto-populate function is actually really helpful in showing you what people are actually searching for when it comes to a certain topic. So going back to the how to cook example, I'll type in how to cook here in the YouTube search bar and you'll see that these other keywords will start to auto populate based on popularity. So I'll go ahead and click on how to cook steak. And based on these results, I can see that I can take things a step further by doing a video on how to cook a butter basted steak or how to cook a steak in a cast iron skillet, for example. 
Again, just trying to be more specific with the original topic that I had. So basically I start with a broad idea, then I go to the YouTube search bar and I try to find a specific angle to take that's either outdated or not being served or an angle where I feel like I can provide a unique perspective. This is a crucial step in my research because it really helps me come up with video ideas, overall content strategies, and it also helps me figure out how my YouTube channel can stand out from the rest. The second tool that I use is Keywords Everywhere, which is a free browser add-on that will tell you the Google search volume for a particular keyword. Obviously, we're uploading our content to YouTube, but because YouTube and Google are a team, the search volume of a keyword in Google can be insightful for estimating the search volume of a keyword in YouTube. YouTube doesn't release the data on search volume, but Google does. So I use this data to help me determine whether YouTube keywords might have search volume or not. If you use a keyword that has zero search volume, meaning no one is searching for that keyword, then it doesn't matter if you rank number one for it because no one's even looking for that video in the first place. And I'll elaborate on what makes good keywords later, but back to keywords everywhere. When you install this into your browser, it'll show you the Google search volume for these keywords as you're typing them into the YouTube search bar. And then if you go to Google, it'll show you related keywords and keywords that people also search for, which is super helpful because I usually take the top keywords listed here and then go back to YouTube and scope them out. I know that sounds like a lot of work, but I promise you it really can make all the difference in whether your video sits on the shelf or gets new views for every day that it's on your channel. Now, the third tool that I use is called TubeBuddy, which is a browser plugin that'll provide you with a variety of insightful data directly within YouTube. So once you install it, all the data will just populate right there in the sidebar when you're on youtube.com. So let me walk you through how I use TubeBuddy by using an example. I'll search the keyword, how to cook a ribeye steak. And you'll see that keywords everywhere is telling me right underneath the search bar, what the search volume is for this particular keyword in Google. So there's 300, 3000 searches per month for this keyword. And then TubeBuddy, which will be built in directly into your browser when you're on youtube.com, will display its data here. So all of this data is going to be YouTube specific. So the first thing it'll show you is search volume, which it's showing that it's very good, which is fantastic because we wanna to try to use keywords that have some search volume to them so that we know that this keyword and this topic is in demand. It'll also give you an estimate of the search volume number so you can see here, 136,000 searches per month, which is a lot higher than 3,000 back in Google. So there's clearly a lot of demand for this content, but it'll also give you a gauge of the competition. So this is closer to the red zone. It says that it's fair. And that means that there's actually a lot of existing content that is related to this particular keyword, which means that it's probably gonna be harder for you to break through. It'll also tell you related searches and most used tags associated with this keyword, which is great. It's the same thing as keywords everywhere. If you want to try to find a more specific angle or something that maybe has less competition, like let's see how to cook a ribeye steak in a cast iron skillet. I think the more specific that you're gonna get, I keep emphasizing this, um, the, the better that it's gonna be for everyone. So you'll see that there's still some search, which is great, but there's so much less competition and TubeBuddy is telling you that it's very good. So that's fantastic. Another cool thing that TubeBuddy shows you is video specific data, even on videos that aren't your own. So I'll go ahead and click on this number one result by Sam the Cooking Guy. Let me pause that. TubeBuddy will load here in the sidebar and here's some of that data that I was talking about, but the cool thing is really seeing what tags this creator used for this particular video and their corresponding search rankings. So I'll go ahead and click this button and this guy is ranking for like every single tag that they use, which is really cool. So if you were to type in how to cook the best ribeye steak into YouTube, he'll be ranking number one, best ribeye, number one, cook the best steak, number two, steak, number seven, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what these green numbers are. They show the ranking. And of course you can see the ranking, not just for other people's videos, but your own videos for your own tags that you're using. 
There is a free version and a pro version of TubeBuddy, but the free version is actually pretty good. I used it for a long time, but now I do use the pro version. Either way, if you wanna download the TubeBuddy browser extension, head on over to tubebuddy.com slash heatherjustcreate. So I use a combination of the YouTube search bar, keywords everywhere, and TubeBuddy when I'm doing research for my videos and identifying effective keywords to use as my video tags. Again, this process is arduous, but it can make all the difference. Moving on, number four. How do you know whether a keyword is good or bad? Here are a couple things to consider. First, make sure to put yourself in the eyes of the viewer when you're doing your research. I think that as creators, we can get so caught up in what we wanna say that we're not thinking enough about what our target audience is actually searching for. Oftentimes viewers are using different wording, even though we're referring to similar things. So like how to get over camera shyness versus how to be more confident in front of the camera. Next, don't forget that keywords can be phrases with multiple words. Focusing on delivering a specific piece of content for a specific audience is key. So for example, time management versus how to manage my time as a student. These videos are likely to have different angles for different audiences. Then there's search volume and competition, which is why a tool like TubeBuddy is super helpful. You wanna make sure that you're using keywords that have at least some search volume to them. I mentioned this earlier, but if you're ranking number one for a keyword that has zero search volume, then it doesn't matter because no one's even looking for that keyword. Also, you wanna consider competition. It would be great to rank for a keyword that has super high search volume, but chances are a keyword that has a lot of search behind it also has a lot of competition to go with it, which means that it's gonna be very difficult for you to rank for it. In general, ideal keywords have decent search volume and relatively low competition. So now that we've done our research, how do we actually add these tags to our videos? Number five, prioritize for one keyword. After doing your research, you'll have a list of keywords that you can use as tags, but we wanna try to rank for one primary keyword. So pick a keyword that you think is the most relevant to your video, has decent search volume and relatively low competition, and add that as the first tag in your tag list when you're uploading your video to YouTube. You'll also wanna include that target keyword as part of your video title and somewhere in your video description. The other tags are really just there to complement the target tag. So these are usually just variations or derivatives of that target keyword. You'll know which ones to use based on your research. So let me show you an example from my vlog channel. So this is my most popular video on my vlog channel and I attribute most of that to the specificity of the content. So I've been emphasizing that a lot in this video, being as specific as possible. And this is basically a tutorial type video for this startup company at the time, three years ago, when I decided to work for them as a delivery driver. And I came up with the idea to do the video because when I had initially signed up to work for them, I went on YouTube to see how to do it and there wasn't any videos on it, which is why after having worked there for a few weeks, I was like, I'm gonna make my own video to help other people who are trying out Postmates. And so that's why, even though I've been emphasizing in this video to use keyword phrases that contain multiple words, there really was no competition for the word Postmates at the time. So that was my target keyword. And then you'll see that all the rest of these keywords are kind of just you know, derivatives or expansions of the word Postmates. What is Postmates, Postmates delivery, how to be a Postmates, Postmates delivery driver. And then when you click on show search rankings in TubeBuddy, it'll show you all of the rankings for each corresponding keyword. Now, again, this video is ranking so well because it's so specific which is why I can't emphasize specificity enough. Now, there are several, several numerous factors that go into how to rank for tags and, and how to get your videos to, to rank and stuff like that. But really the, the main takeaway for this video is if you make content that is catered to a specific group of people, like for this one, obviously it's catered to anyone who wanted to work for Postmates as a Postmates driver in the Los Angeles area. Not only is it gonna help rank your videos, but your videos will just perform better overall.
Next, number six, take advantage of all 500 characters. I think that tags are such a vital part of this discovery process that to not take advantage of the 500 characters you're given is just a waste. If you can't find enough keywords to fill up that space, go back to the research step and look for related keywords in both YouTube and Google. Next, number seven, relevance is everything. This is real talk here, guys. Relevancy, relevancy, relevancy. People might be tempted to manipulate the system or game the system by using keywords that are super popular, but aren't necessarily related just to try and get more views. I strongly advise against that because here's the thing, viewers aren't trying to hack anything. They're just genuinely trying to look for content that they want to watch and the YouTube algorithm is updating every single day to best serve these viewers so that these viewers stay on their platform as long as possible. So if you help the algorithm instead of trying to hack it, it really will work. The other thing is that bounce rate is something that you want to avoid. So if people click on your video expecting it to be about one thing, but it's actually about something completely different, they're just gonna close the video in the first five, 10 seconds and they'll bounce. If a lot of people do this, then your video will have a high bounce rate and it'll just make your overall channel look bad to YouTube. So focus on being relevant to the keywords that your target audience is searching for and you'll be golden. Finally, number eight, tagging is only part of the process. Just because you tag all of your videos as effectively as possible doesn't mean that you're going to be a million plus subscriber YouTuber now. If your video sucks, then no amount of optimization is going to help you. On the other hand, if your video is absolutely amazing, then you won't even need to optimize your video. YouTube will recognize that your video has a high click-through rate and it's generating a lot of watch time, so it'll start suggesting your video to new audiences that are similar to the people who've already watched your video. Also, getting people to discover your videos is one thing, but getting them to actually stick around and become subscribers is a completely different story. That's why you wanna make sure that your channel is set up for success, is branded, is optimized, and is in the best position to show your new viewers why they should subscribe to your future content and join your community. If you're not sure whether your channel is properly optimized, you can download my free YouTube action plan, which will walk you through the entire process step by step. Head on over to sharesparkmedia.com slash YouTube action plan to download it for free. All right, that's the end of this video. I hope you guys found that helpful. If you have any other questions about tags or YouTube in general, feel free to leave them here in the comments. I am here to help you as your YouTube coach. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.